Now in this next video, what we're going to do is actually create the table, a lookup table, in uh, SQL Server Management Studio. And the way we do that, we go to the database, and I'm going to pick this first database that I made called Acme. And under where it says tables, you see right now when I open that up, there's no tables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that. Actually, I'm going to right click, and then I'm going to pick new table. Now when I do this, we're going to be making a table for units of measure. So as soon as that comes up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, create my, my key field. And this is basically the primary key. It's going to be an auto increment. And I'm going to set that to an int. Now when I do that, I have to right click right over here on this arrow and pick set primary key. But unlike Microsoft Access, this is not an auto number. You would think that it would be right away, but it's not. I have to go down here and open up all this stuff. And actually, I'm going to go a little higher. Um, see where this says identity specification? If I double click that and then I open it up where it says is identity, I'm going to double click there. See how it changed to yes, yes, one, one. Now, this field is not just a primary key and it's unique, but it's also an auto number. All right, let me put this down a little bit again. Now the next thing I'm going to do is make my two text fields. And this is how I happen to like to name things. I'm going to say uh, you display. It's going to be Veracare. I'm going to set this to 2000. Now the good news is you only pay for what you use. So there's really, in my mind, no reason to make up 10 characters or 25, because there's always going to be something that's going to be longer. I'm going to also make one called description. The reason I do this is that sometimes it's nice to have two text fields, maybe for like a longer name and a shorter name, but I like calling them the same thing every time so that when I'm querying against, you know, five different lookup tables, I don't have to remember what I named everything. This next field, visible, is really just going to be a way for me to control whether or not uh, something is going to be suppressed in a dropdown. Sometimes you'll have something in a lookup table where you don't want to show it anymore. You have to keep it in the system because there's records that are using it, but you don't want to make it available anymore. Um, kind of like if you were picking baseball teams and one of them is no longer you know, around. Uh, okay, so that's a bit. Now, what I'm also going to do for this field is I'm going to give it a default value. I'm going to go up here. See where that says default value for binding? I want to set it to true, but the way to do that in SQL Server is you put a 1. Now I go down to my next field. I'll just go back there, show you. So it has a 1. That means it's going to be set to true. Now, I also want to set an order field. Whoops. All this is is going to be an int. And it's just going to be if I need to do something weird in a dropdown where I can change um, how things are sorted, uh, you know, instead of just maybe alphanumerically, I might want to have a little more control over it. So I'm just going to put um, an order by field. But what I'm going to do for the default value, instead of putting like 1 or 10 or something like that, I'm going to put a ridiculously long number. This way, everything that gets created is going to have the same number, so it's not going to affect anything. But this way, if I start changing stuff, like I'm going to say, well, this you know record's going to be 10, and this one's going to be 20. Um, the, the reason why I give this a high number is it puts all these at the end of the line. If this was null or 0, they'd all be at the beginning. So it would kind of screw up what you were trying to do. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a field called you created. Here's another thing. Use the same naming convention every time you make this field. Don't call it created over here and then create date another field. Just always call it the same thing. The prefix may change, but call it the same thing. You'll be so glad that you did. Okay, date time. Now get this. If I want to put a default value for that, what do I do? I use an actual out of the box function in SQL Server called get date, and I have to put the parentheses. Nothing goes in them, but I have to put the parentheses. Now, modified, that's something that hasn't really happened yet when you're first creating records. So it's also a date time, but this one does not have a default value. Now I'm going to hit save, and it wants me to call it something intelligent like, oh, table one. Well, I'm going to call it units, and then we're going to open this up. Now, let me close out of here. And now we have this new table. Let's open that up by right clicking on it. And then in this version of SQL or Management Studio, we want to say Edit All Rows. And of course, there's no records in it yet. But when that opens up, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to just fill in a couple of things. 
In this first record, I'm just going to say that the short name is in and the long name is inches and have a nice day and then I'm going to click off of it. See how everything's grayed out? This stuff's all gray, nothing's happening, what happened to all our default stuff? When I hit this exclamation point, it's going to requery that and look at what SQL Server did. Of course it gave us an auto number. It set visible to true, we didn't have to do anything. It set the order to 9999 like we asked it to, we didn't have to do anything. And the create date, it took the exact date timestamp of when we made this, all the way to the milliseconds. Pretty slick, huh? And that's how I would really recommend making all of your setup tables. With these amount of fields as a minimum, you can add more, but this, trust me on this, if you make this amount of minimum fields with a couple of date fields, an order, a visible, and a couple of text fields, you'll be really happy that you did, especially later on when your database gets really big.